changed our lives. It taught us that you could build a business that could create social impact and economic impact at the same time. It was a mind-blowing experience that you can build a double bottom line business. Then we went on and we said, okay, what are we going to build? What are we going to solve? And we said, in Malaysia and in Southeast Asia, there is a real problem. And that real problem is safety for women, especially in their daily commute. And we said, okay, let's work on that. Let's work on solving that real problem. So uh, someone here might have a little small business that they're starting, or someone might have a very small church that they're starting. How did it grow? Well, if anything I say is probably a waste of time, there's one thing I would say. Surrender to God, not to experts. All the experts in the world told me, no, no, no. And what I did was I literally just went on my knees and I just surrendered. And by surrendering, I actually felt every time there was a trial or tribulation, I actually got stronger and that calling became clearer to push through. What, what have you learned along the, the way in the last 11 years? Well, I would say, number one, lead with humility. Like Jesus, we've learned, if Jesus can go down onto the ground and wash the feet of his disciples, or if our God of God, our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords could do that, then who am I? So what we did was, every six months we have a 360 feedback loop, where effectively 25, you know, my directs, 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 you know, three levels from me give me feedback, anonymous feedback. It comes with strengths, it comes with warts and all. What I do is I take that feedback and I share it to all 25 of uh, the leaders. All, anything negative as well? You've all the negative as well. <laughs> uh, and I let them or let me be totally vulnerable and say, this is my from state with all the warts and weaknesses, and this will be my to state. And folks, you hold me accountable. I would say the second um, leadership principle that we push really hard on is relentlessly pursue excellence. If you read scripture, God reminds us, we don't work for man, we work for him. He expects excellent work for, from us. And that means we have to push really, really hard. And what does that mean? It, you know, as uh, the CEO of Grab, I'm willing to break my back for Grab. It is an honor, it is a privilege to be, of, to be a servant, to serve the communities we have committed to serve. We have a servant leadership culture, um, servant first, then leader. We created a culture called 4H, humility, which I talked about, hunger, which is this aspect of gritting through pain and working extremely hard, the third is honor. I remember when we couldn't fulfill an agreement, we had to pay back hundreds of millions of dollars. Even though we didn't have to in the legal agreement, we did because it was the right thing to do from an honor perspective. And then the last is heart, the heart to serve communities. Okay. Being a Christian is not being saying you're a Christian, but it's about serving others and especially serving the poor because we cannot ever compromise on servant leadership culture. What difference does your faith make? Um, my faith has actually been a massive competitive advantage. <laughs> being an entrepreneur, being a leader, as many of you know, you will go through some really, really high highs. When I remember raising my first $10 million, my, then after that, my first $100 million, 
Then after my first billion dollars, every time I was, it was tempting to go, I'm the man, you know, it's me, it's all me, it's our team, we can do this, killer. <laughs> but instead, I said, it's zero me, it's all you, God, it's 100% you, Jesus. You made this possible. You blessed us with this team. You gave us this opportunity. It kept us so grounded. Now, Chloe, um, Chloe, this is not, this is something you've done together, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, we've done Absolutely. this every day, every meeting together. Every, we try to never take a night apart, and that's something that I feel has always been quite unique to him is that from the very beginning, even as a tech company, which is predominantly very male, especially in Asia, Anthony has been the same person he is at home, in the church, and in work. There's no three different Anthonys. There's one Anthony. Um, whether he takes feedback in the office, which is the story you were sharing, he also takes feedback from his wife, from his kids. He constantly <laughs> that, asks us... That's the best humbling <laughs> best. You, you described him to me as a feedback junkie. He is. And, and he would constantly, even from our seven-year-old, be able to take feedback at, and, and learn from whether it's a writer, a merchant. And he's the worst person to ever travel with because whenever we travel, he needs to try every single new app. He needs to talk to every driver, <laughs> every person he meets. Uh, because he just constantly wants to learn. Um, but there are bad things as well where sometimes oh, he... Oh, tell us the bad things. <laughs> yeah, so, so I know you're lifting him up up here, but maybe some humility is required. <laughs> but, um, you know, so his love for feedbacks and, and his ability to be very honest um, in sharing very, very hard conversations also unfortunately translates to the home sometimes <laughs> when early on in our marriage I then asked him when he was doing this 360 feedback loop he was very engrossed and, and as a joke I just looked over and said what would you rate me as a wife <laughs> and, and, and he really thought about it and I think that 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 honesty in him this is where husbands, just, I think, maybe just there's some, your stupidity. Yeah, there's oh sometimes you can't be overly honest, and he goes, "I'll probably rate you at eight. <laughs> eight? <laughs> what more could I possibly have done? <laughs> yeah, it was a whole thing of six months of me asking, "What more could I have done?" <laughs> and, and, and now it's like a hundred you know, off the charts. <laughs> say, say what your vision is. Oh, like Anthony said, you know, we've just really learned to submit to him and there are very extreme highs and lows in being in an, um, um, you know, being part of this entrepreneur journey, working with God. But what we have learned really is, is, is like what he said, there is no milestone. Every time you think that's the milestone you need to achieve to get there, we've, we've, we've managed to achieve many, many things in such a young age. But I think God's calling is really what has kept us centered um, and ground it through it all. And one of the things you said about him is he's very disciplined. Oh, yes, very disciplined. So, you know, we host, we have dinners five, six nights out of a week. We've never cooked at home for years because constantly entertaining or social dinners or work dinners. But he will be the first person to leave every social dinner, no matter how much fun we're having, because the next day he knows he needs to be on it. All his devices are linked to the company or to me to make sure he's never, ever tempted. It's that constant need to, to hold himself accountable, um, whether in personal life, in his faith, or at work. It's the same discipline. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anthony. Thanks, 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 You are absolutely brilliant. Fantastic. What a fascinating interview.